Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's CLEI Center for Keratoconus KC video blog. Today, we're going to shift gears a little bit and talk about intraocular lens implants in keratoconus. Uh, these are otherwise known as ICLs. The goal of the ICL is to improve general vision without glasses and contact lenses in KC patients who have a high degree of nearsightedness. There are a lot of KC patients who have a high baseline of nearsightedness or at least have that in one eye, which makes it very difficult to use the two eyes together. Even with the ICL, glasses or contacts usually are still going to be necessary to optimize vision. But with the ICL, many patients can get around relatively well without glasses or contact lenses. The ICL is what is considered to be a phacic lens implant. Phacic means your eye's natural lens. So this type of implant is placed in front of your own natural lens, just behind the colored part of your eye or the iris. And this allows us to correct a very high degree of nearsightedness because we don't need to manipulate your cornea at all. Rather, the lens power is placed right into the ICL, and this does a lot of the focusing uh, for your eye, even in the case of keratoconus. Generally, ICL candidates are somewhat younger. We can treat patients up to 50 years old. They need to have high nearsightedness without too much astigmatism. And you'd also want to have reasonable vision with glasses because your glasses corrected vision is predictive of the type of vision that you might obtain after the ICL placement. There are a couple of steps in the ICL process, we need to get a number of measurements to properly size the lens implant as well as to judge the proper power in your particular circumstance. First, we also need to perform what's called a laser iridotomy. This is a very small hole that's made into the colored portion, the iris of your eye, in order to allow the normal ocular fluids to flow around the ICL. You can see here in the bottom left that the implant is placed between your natural lens and your iris. A small hole allows proper fluids to percolate around the lens to continue the nourishment of all of your ocular structures. This is done right in the office with a local anesthetic and a small hole is made in the iris with the laser. It's a procedure that takes about five or 10 minutes. The ICL itself is a very flexible, thin, and clear lens, uh, as you see here. The procedure is done in our outpatient surgery center local anesthetic and a mild sedative is used, so you should be entirely comfortable. The entire procedure takes about 30 to 60 minutes. You can see here in the upper left, the ICL. Upper right, the ICL is placed into a lens injector, so it's a foldable lens. It's placed through a very small incision in your eye. It unfolds in the eye and then is properly positioned so the optic or the important lenticular portion is in the proper location for best vision afterwards. Uh, here you see a lens on the bottom uh, that's in place right after surgery. Visual acuity uh, tends to improve the next day and can be rather dramatic in some cases. Now, as I said before, the intraocular lens only corrects the large degree of myopia or nearsightedness, which you might have. Now, the ICL can be combined with intacts or conductive keratoplasty or topography-guided laser treatments in order to further smooth the cornea and keratoconus to improve uh, the visual results. ICLs certainly are not for everybody. 
with keratoconus. They're best for patients with high nearsightedness. In particular, patients can have a good advantage with the ICL where one eye is highly nearsighted and the other eye is not so nearsighted. This gives a better balance of the vision. In addition, we need to see that your eye is of the correct shape uh, and size so the lens can be placed uh, in a safe fashion. Generally, ICLs are safe procedures. Uh, there are risks. These can include infection or inflammation in a small number of patients. Uh, in addition, there is a slight increase in the risk of earlier cataract formation in patients with ICLs. As you know, cataracts usually form in patients who are older. Uh, there is a small percentage of patients after the ICL procedure who may develop a cataract earlier uh, than might be anticipated. Uh, this can be treated then, if necessary, with uh, normal cataract surgery procedures. So thank you for tuning in today and look forward uh, to talking about another keratoconus topic when we meet again next week. Bye-bye now.